Looked at from the depths of space, our world is a bright blue planet. The reason for this extraordinary color of the Earth is the water which covers 70% of it. With its water, the Earth resembles an oasis in the middle of a vast desert of space. Life on Earth does not just consist of what we see on land. There is also a rich undersea life far from our sight. Each with its own unique design, the oceans are home to very different kinds of sea creatures. To such an extent, in fact, that the millions of species in the seas are little by little increasing with every new dive. In this film, you will make the close acquaintance of the fascinating sea creatures living in the oceans and also witness God's incomparable art of creation with examples you might never have seen before. These white particles being carried along by the current are actually tiny living things. Plankton represents the largest number of living things in the sea. They are invertebrates, which come in a wide range of varieties, all very different to one another. These strangely shaped creatures represent the basic source of food for sea life. They are a rich source of protein for many sea creatures, from 100-ton whales to jellyfish. The oceans are full of these creatures, which are at first sight invisible. Spiny skinned invertebrates are in the majority on the ocean floor. Sea urchins, starfish, sea cucumbers and all the rest. These living things look for food by combing the ocean floor. The sea urchin is an interesting looking invertebrate. It has no hard shell to protect its soft body from predators, although it does possess a deterrent weapon, its spines. Sea urchin spines are mobile and even poisonous in some species and can reach up to 30 centimeters in length. These tubular feet protruding from its body are the sea chestnut's invaluable limbs. 
These feet are both flexible and at the same time have a suction property. Using them, the creatures can easily cling to rocks and wander about the seabed. The tubes are just like the urchin's eyes. They perceive heat, light and vibrations in the water in a most sensitive manner. Plankton swept along by the currents are sucked up by the sea urchin's feet, which also serve as the creature's gills. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged here. The sea urchin's mouth is immediately underneath its body. It scratches up with its teeth and eats algae from the rocks over which it travels. Sea urchin reproduction is a most fascinating time. They come along side by side, and as the female leaves her eggs into the current, the male deposits his sperm. There are millions of these cells. The clouds of eggs mingle with the clouds of sperm. When one considers all the difficulties and dangers they will face, it becomes apparent why so many cells are given off. The genes from the female combine with those of the male. The number of genes in these cells has been deliberately reduced by half. This allows a healthy sea urchin cell to form when the genes from the male and female are brought together. When the male and female cells combine, the cells immediately begin to divide and multiply and to assume their various characteristics. These dividing cells later assume a larval form. The sea urchin's spiny extensions, tubular feet, digestive system, and divergent tissues continue developing during the larval stage. This is a scallop in the larval stage. And this is a starfish larva. These will mature and be carried to new locations by the current and continue life under the sea. Who is it who determines the number of eggs and sperm cells? Who selects the timing and decides that the number of egg and sperm cell genes should be half that in the other cells? No creature living at the bottom of the sea can come by such information by itself. There is no doubt that it is the Almighty God, the possessor of infinite might and knowledge, who gives shape to the sea urchin and determines every stage of its life. Another spiny-skinned invertebrate which lives under the sea is the starfish. It moves with ease across the seafloor. Special suction cups have been placed in its arms to allow it to cling on in safety. This allows it to climb where it chooses, 